well, welcome. It's really good to be here with you today. Uh, I want you to just notice our picture for today. Uh, this is coming uh, just uh, out of Northern California. Uh, first of all, I want you to notice how deep the grass is. I mean, these sheep have luxury uh, like you cannot believe. And what a gorgeous day it was. And you can see it's uh, in, in, early enough in the season that they have not sheared the sheep yet, so they're pretty heavily laden with wool. But I just really appreciate how Sherry captured this story. Now, what's really important about this story today is that these sheep are exactly what our text is talking about today. Only, may I just say, that these sheep aren't the four-legged kind. So let's begin our story in John chapter 10. I uh, hope you enjoy it. This is the Gospel of John chapter 10. Subtitle is The Good Shepherd. Let's begin with verse 1. Truly, truly, Jesus spoke, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs in some other way, he is a thief and a robber. Now, the very first words Jesus speaks here in this beautiful illustration is that there is at times a threat, a thief and a robber. And that threat is going to be expounded upon as we journey through the text. But please do not miss this point. Now, who would want to break in and rob and steal? There apparently some people are. Uh, why? What, what is it about breaking in and stealing the sheep in a spiritual context? What do they have to gain? What do they really care about? If you're taking someone else's sheep, what, what does it really mean? In other words, if these sheep belong to Jesus and he is the good shepherd, what does it mean to take them away from him? That has implications of eternal life. The attempt to find another way in is to believe that your goodness somehow is adequate or better than his, and going in without the shepherd, I'm just going to say, just doesn't work when it comes to the gospel and to salvation. So let's go to verse 2. He who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Jesus is now speaking about the principles of being a shepherd. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, I grew up herding sheep, but I can tell you, at 10, 11, and 12 years old, uh, I followed the sheep, and they followed their nose, but babe, our sheepdog, kept them all on the right path. So here in the Middle Eastern concept, here the sheep recognize the voice of the shepherd. That is such a beautiful illustration. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. That implies that there has been a interaction, a reciprocating relationship between the shepherd and the sheep so that they follow the voice that they know. But this also implies that there's other voices that are calling. So where do these other voices, uh, where does their authority come from? Last question on this slide is, do you recognize Jesus' voice amongst all the other voices? And how do you tell the difference is a significant challenge for Christians today. Because Christianity is being pulled at and redefined in so many unusual and unique ways. Verse 5 says, A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. I cannot stress the importance that you need to know what the voice of Jesus is because there's so many voices trying to pull Christians this way and that into violence, into politics, into so many other areas. Notice verse 6. This figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. So this idea that there are other voices is very, very informative to us. So, again I ask you, what determines the difference between the voices? What is your criteria to determine the difference? And I'm going to say this, there's nothing more important than what the Word of God has given us because it is God's voice to us in print. So when you read Scripture, you are hearing the voice of God, and you can take the Scriptures and compare it 
to all the different voices out there and say, are they in harmony with the voice of God? And that's actually pretty simple to do. That, that, that's not some big complicated thing. So Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not hear them. I hope that's true of you. He says, I am the door, and if anyone enters through me, he or she will be saved and will go out and find pasture. Here's one of the most, most important verses we're going to read today. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, I, I, I want you to understand that there's only one who is the father of all lies, one who is the father of all murders, and that is Satan. So understand that Satan has an agenda to pull Christians away from the Good Shepherd. And that death to kill and destroy is an eternal death. I just want you to pay attention to that. Because Jesus now states clearly, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What a contrast. The thief comes to steal away, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that they, the sheep, may have life and have it abundantly. What, what does God want for you? Th doesn't he want more than anything else for you to have a rich and full life, that you can have it in abundance? I, I think that is such a beautiful, beautiful scripture. Jesus continues this story. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and flees. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and not concerned about the sheep. I just want you to understand that as people pull and tear and attack the church and come at it from so many different directions, Jesus says, you know, at the end of the day, they really don't care about you. I care about you. I want you to have life. I want you to have it to the fullest you possibly have. But these other shepherds or these other hired hands, they come, they really don't care that much about you. Now, the caution Jesus lays out in this verse makes us aware of those who think or act like they are shepherds but are not. They take no responsibility. They bail and they run without, well, they believe, no consequences. Then Jesus continues, verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I want to pause right there for just a moment. Because Jesus is now speaking of his experience at Calvary and the purpose he lays down his life is not for any other reason than for you, for me, for all who will hear his voice and follow him. Verse 16 says, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also. They will hear my voice. They will become one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I might take it up again. Again, the reference to Calvary, to the cross. But who are these other sheep not of this fold? Now, keep in mind, he's speaking to Israel. He is now saying that he is calling a greater multitude than Israel itself. And that multitude that is being called includes you and me. Now we're going to look at verse 18. No one has taken it away from me, that's his life, but I lay it down of my own initiative. You know, I've heard people say that, you know, God is kind of mean if you look at Calvary because he put Jesus up there and put him to death. I, I want you to notice what the good shepherd is saying. No one is taken away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my father. These are significant words. Jesus acts at Calvary on his own free will. Now in verse 19, a division occurred among the Jews because of these words. 
Many of them were saying, he has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? And others were saying, these are not the sayings of one demon possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? So we picked up in 8 and 9 this ongoing conflict within the multitude that are in the hearing of the words of Jesus. They're trying to decide, who is this man? What is he all about? And I want you to pay attention to the arguments because those are very significant words. People are being convicted. They're saying, look at the evidence. Pay attention to the evidence. Now we close with one of those lovely pictures again of that little meadow with the sheep in it. That lamb that's just off to the right of the screen I'm looking at. He's got his ears up. He's watching everything. There's one to the left that they're paying attention and saying, what's going on out there in the world? Um, I think that's because somebody was out there with a camera that they were kind of intrigued with. I know this is a short presentation. I hope it's a blessing for you. I hope that you walk away from this conversation today knowing what is it God wants for you. He wants to give you his life. He wants you to have an abundant and full life. And he wants you to know that those who come and attack and want to pull the sheep away from the fold, that you will not hear their voices. You will not recognize them because the only voice you know is his. Blessings. Take care now. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you, Sherry. Bye-bye.